My father worked as a lawyer for the richest family in New York until his plane went down in Long Island Sound. He left me his biggest client, the Darlings, Trip, the Empire Builder, Letitia, the sophisticated social life, Karen, the professional divorcee. I want to marry Nick. Let me help you. Brian, the man of God. What about Brian Jr.? I'm taking him back to Brazil. You can't just uproot him. He has a life here now. Patrick, the principal politician. The three of us are going to sit down together and set some ground rules. Who me and who? Carmelita. And Jeremy and Juliet, the well-behaved twins. I want a job. What can you do? Gracias. You will not believe the girl whose car I'm parking. Darling Plaza was our first home in Manhattan. Convinced Trift to throw Darling Plaza into the pot. It is Simon Elder who has stolen my son. I want to destroy him. I love the smell. <laughs> okay, which one? All right, let me see. Creme brulee or flan? Yeah, it's a custard theme. Mm-hmm. Are you sure you're going to be able to finish this before Thanksgiving at my parents? It's only two days. Yeah, yeah I have very little to do today. Just have to meet with Trip briefly and help Brian with his custody hearing, and then I am free for the entire holiday oh. weekend. Mm. Five days without Nick George. Won't the Darling Dynasty crumble into dust without you? It just might. But it would be very expensive dust. <laughs> Anything going on with Darling Plaza? Not yet. I transferred the deed over to Simon Elder two weeks ago. He's given me no indication of his plans. Is that it, then? He just wanted to seal my soul? Rob me of... The building where my kids were raised robbed me of my son. My son, Nick. Have you heard from Patrick lately? Not since the wedding. He hasn't returned any of my calls. You can't imagine what it's like, Nicky. Come to the end of your life. So many years of work. So many years of achievement. And then right in front of your face. It's all being spirited away by this capricious man. Patrick is still your son, Tripp. No matter what kind of political alliance he forms with Simon Elder, for whatever reason, he's still your son. Yeah. Arrange a sit-down with Patrick and Simon Elder for me, will you? A uh, sit-down, okay. The sooner the better. Tomorrow evening, up at Valhalla. Wait, Trip, do you expect him to leave the city the day before Thanksgiving and go 60 miles up the Hudson River Valley for a sit-down? I... You handed him the deed to Darling Plaza to gain influence with him, right? Yeah. So, use your influence. Cash it in. All right, I'm on it. You'll be there at my side, okay? Trip, it's, it's Thanksgiving weekend. I made plans with the family. I'll get you out really early Thursday morning. Promise me. What do you want me to tell Patrick to... Just tell him Simon Elder will be there. That'll make him feel safe. We leave the rest up to his vanity. How much longer are we going to be staying at this hotel? Living out of a suitcase, eating room service all the time? It's a little tiresome. Thank you for being so patient. Have you set up the meeting with Carmelita yet? Um, I'm not sure this is the best time for her. Uh, she's got finals coming up. Oh, she's in school. What school? Um, uh, cosmetology. Well, it's always something, isn't it? When would be a good time for her? Uh, well, what is it you want to talk about? Just make it happen. If you want to stay married to me, quit stalling and make it happen. I understand, but... Today. Thank you for coming on such short notice, Georgia. Anytime you get divorced, Karen, I'm here for you. But you know, we don't have to do this only after you get divorced. <laughs> yeah, actually, we kind of do. Was that Georgia? What a 
a trooper, always being there for you like that. It's really, like, inspiring. Mm, it takes a village. Something was off last night, though. It wasn't the same. Hmm. Do tell. Well, usually when Giorgio and I have meaningless post-divorce sex, it feels a little less meaningless. Like, we're somehow... Planets whose orbits intersect every ten years? No. Just hornier. Oh. You can eat those? No, replenish. What's the matter with you? I miss my son. Brian Jr. left? Where'd he go? His mother came and took him away a week ago, Karen. I'm fighting for custody. Brian? Hey, look, you... You know how the justice system works. Whoever has the most money wins, right? You've got nothing to worry about. Well, thanks for the advice. Thanks for the pancakes. Was Brian wearing Clive Christian number one? That's me. And it's number two, unreleased to the public. <sighs> Why are you wearing cologne? There's this girl who parks at the garage. She won't go out with me. She thinks I'm like just a valet. Oh, so you're gonna knock her unconscious with your cologne and then what, Shanghai her? Just tell her you're Jeremy Darling. No. Natalie pretended to be pregnant just to get my money. I want this girl to like me for me. Hey, that's not gonna happen. You're a darling. As soon as she finds that out, things are never gonna be the same. <laughs> To me. I guess she can never find out then. That is a good plan. Good plan, my friend. He's not asking you to move back in. He's not asking you to do anything except sit down with him and Simon and talk. Well, Nick, that's the last thing on earth I would ever consider doing. I know. But Patrick, he is your father. It's taken me over 30 years to muster the courage to break free from him. I'm not about to go running back into shooting range. Okay. But I'll do it. I'll do it, okay? I just need one little favor. She just wants to talk. I can't do it. I can't face her. I'm sorry. Tell Patrick no. Carmelita, just put yourself in Ellen's shoes, just for a second. She's not asking Patrick to end the affair. She's not asking you to vanish. She just wants to talk. You know, who knows? Maybe the three of you can somehow, I don't know, complete each other. You really think that's possible? Well, I think that life is very creative and surprising, and sometimes we find solutions where we thought there weren't any. Patrick is so lucky to have someone like you in his life. <sighs> I'll do it. Good. I'll sit down. Well, that's what we call it. <laughs> Wait, okay, and what are the terms? Uh, no terms. Well, because it sounds so old world, I think it, it must be terms. No, just the three of you sitting down to talk, and me. Okay. Does this have anything to do with the Darling Plaza? I don't think so. I think it has to do with the fact he feels he's lost his son to you. That's what he's troubled about right now. Okay, so it, you're being straight with me about this little sit down. You promised me that I'm not gonna be walking into some sort of classic trip, darling, ambush? I, I promise. Yeah, okay, I'll go. Actually, I think it could be beneficial. Good. It's not every day two men like us sit down and break bread together. It should be interesting. Done. <laughs> I think we can all agree it's in everyone's best interest to settle this without going to the judge tomorrow. What you think, Mr. George, is beside the point. My client's settling for nothing less than sole physical and legal custody. Are you out of your freaking mind? I know what's best for my child. Says the tramp who slept with me last week to get him back. Brian, let me handle this. Then handle it! Given Brian Jr.'s feelings for his father, do you think that moving to Brazil is really what's best for him? These two have bonded since you first deposited your son with Brian and then subsequently disappeared. Was this before or after he deposited the child with you? Beat it, you prissy little creep. Brian, let's just cool it, okay? Let's just stop. I think I have come up with what is a very fair proposal for joint custody. You will be well compensated, provided you stay in the city, and it puts your son's best interests first. I'll give you $1 million to get up and walk out of here right now. Excuse me? Hey, that's not what we're here to do, Brian. Let me finish. Two million. Are you trying to buy? My son? I'm trying to buy our son. Nobody is buying anybody. This is ridiculous. We're leaving. Three million. 
We both know it's all about the money with you anyway. Now I remember why it didn't work with us. You are not a human being. Don't look at me like that. Three million was more than fair. Hey. Hey. How you doing, baby? better not be your way of saying you're missing Thanksgiving. I am not missing Thanksgiving. Good. Mm, I just have to postpone the painting until the weekend, and I'm going to catch up with you and Kiki at your parents'. I have to go up to the Darlings Country House tomorrow. Trip is having a sit down with Patrick and Simon Elder. He wants me there. I'm sorry. You know what? It's okay. Okay. Huh. I know you wouldn't get to it, so maybe I'll start painting because I'd like it done before the holidays because, you know, I actually care. Hey, Lisa, you know what? Why don't you come with me? Well, we'll drop Kiki off at your folks first, and then this weekend we'll all paint together. I am not going to stay in the same house as the Darlings. Italy was bad enough. Oh, come on, Lisa. I am not going to stay the night at the same place you and Karen Darling spend a dozen magical summers together. You know what? How about you go? You enjoy a nice long weekend with her, and I will stay here, and I will paint. Lisa, I don't particularly want to go, but I have to. And since I have to, I would like you to come with me. Actually, is it possible to live my career overnight? I think I drank a little too much wine at dinner. I'm so on board with that. You know, both myself and the garage encourage responsible yet heavy drinking. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I'm just going to take a cab now. Hi. Hey, happy out there. Mm. What do you got going on in there? French fries from the truffle pot. You know, I, I could just drive you home. That way, that way you have your car in the morning. I don't think so. Come on, cab it home. No muss, no fuss, in and out. Boom. So sweet of you. Help me out a lot. Well, I will, I will, I will go fetch your sherry. Why do I have to come to Ball Hall for Thanksgiving? Brian's not going to be there. Your brother Brian has a custody hearing. He's presiding over two funerals this weekend. The holiday season die-off has commenced. I, I told you I'd help you with Nick, so trust me, just come. What if Daddy sends me and Nick to India? Oh, no, wait. Bali. To set up an orphanage for the really starving children. And we'd have to live alone. In a grass hut, on the beach. As wonderful as that sounds, coming to Valhalla is all you really need to do. She'll be there. Won't she? Mm -hmm. I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, she will. Of course she will. She's his wife. It's so her to come along, isn't it? Just relax, my dear. Everything is going to work itself out. Door to door. Service with a smile. <laughs> Thank you for this. Well, Brooklyn is uh, far away. I mean, I mean, I, I forgot how far it is. It's like, it's like a whole other world. Gonna be all right getting home? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'll, I'll call a cab. Maybe I'll hobo and hop a boxcar. <laughs> There's always two blocks away. Right, yeah, the, the subway. There you go. Listen, Sophia. The answer is yes. To what? I will go out with you. But I don't even know your last name. Well, I, I, don't, I don't even know your last name. I'm Sofia Montoya, and you're Jeremy. I'm cool with just Jeremy, babe. Listen, Jer Jeremy Babison. Babison. Yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a common American last name. It's right on all those lists beside Smith, Wong, and White. Well, thank you again for the ride. And I'll see you tomorrow. Jeremy Babison. Yes, yes, you have. <laughs> Answer the door. Well, 
Isn't this something? Ellen, I've heard a lot about you. I wish I could say the same. Unfortunately, I've been kept completely in the dark. I have too. In a sense. Come in. Please. You can have one Saturday night a month, but the rest of the weekends are ours. You can have one Tuesday or Wednesday night every other week to do whatever it is that the two of you do, as long as he is home in time to put the kids to bed before he does it. That's less than I get him now. So why exactly would I do this? Because it's more than you'll ever have otherwise. Trust me. Starting now, this is the new normal. Sweetheart, are you sure you want to... Please, Pat, stay out of it. Don't you think I should participate in this conversation? Patrick, maybe you should take a walk. Um, okay. Okay. He'll spend holidays with us, family birthdays, and obviously all campaign-related events are completely off-limits. The only way that this is gonna work is if I get him two nights every week or Patrick's gonna end up sneaking out and neither one of us wants that, do we? Family is the only thing that matters to me. And as the arbitrator in this case, I'm sure you can appreciate that. And that's why I believe as a father and a minister that I should share custody with Brian Jr. and she should not be able to whisk him away to friggin' Brazil. Thank you, Reverend Darling, for your forthrightness. Mr. Mitchell? Reverend Darling, who is Gustav? Go ahead, tell him. Gustav is my um, pet name for Brian Jr.'s uh, nickname, kind of. Nickname, really? Yeah. It's a rather unremarkable occurrence between a father and son. Is it true you forced Brian Jr. to lie to your wife and pretend he was a Swedish orphan whose parents died in a car accident? No. No? It was a bullet train accident, not a car. Get your facts straight. But you did make him lie. No. I offered him an opportunity to work with me to smooth the way towards building a new family structure by soft peddling, as it were, the nature of his involvement with me and by making it a fun game. Isn't it also true, Reverend Darling, that you kept Brian Jr. on a diet of Swedish foods, including fermented milk and reindeer? It was once. It was a one-day thing. And didn't you forbid him to tell the truth to your wife until he was so paralyzed by fear and guilt of hellfire and damnation that he had to confess the truth himself? I need help. I've got this little romantic rendezvous tonight, and uh, I, I was wondering if you could hook me up with a place to eat. A restaurant? This girl I like, she doesn't know who I am. You know, she thinks I'm this normal parking attendant. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I want to keep it that way. Ah. So, wh where, where do people like you go out? People like me? Yeah, you know, like, poor, poor people. Where, where do you eat when you go out? You know, Jeremy, I actually make a pretty decent living working for your family. I've, I've seen you eating your bag lunch and, you know, I don't know what's going on with the whole silent movie star mustache, but it seems pretty poverty related. You're right, Jeremy. I can't actually afford a beard. It's uh, a good one. In the interest of full poor disclosure, uh, Marine and I do enjoy occasionally going out for pizza or a walk down the Brooklyn Promenade. That's sweet and simple. I like it. Sometimes after, we'll take a bottle of wine up on the roof. And if the stars are out and the mood hits us, well, you know us poor people. You do indeed, Al Fresco? Yep. Clark's Dale! You're like the, the fountain of middle class romance formation. I've been called that before. Prepare yourself, Brian. We may lose. Do you think? You're the worst. Did you even go to law school? 
What did you want me to do? You've lied about this kid from day one, Brian, and everybody knows it. I'm sorry, I can't change reality. Well, then you suck. I had a plan, and you sabotaged me every step of the way. Just go out there and, and get them back in here and get a retrial or a mistrial or something. This isn't a trial. The arbitrator makes a recommendation to the judge based on testimony, and your little performance in here didn't help. The fact is, Andrea raised Brian for seven years, and you had him for two months, and you made him pretend to be Swedish. So why don't you let me worry about the law? Go see Andrea alone, reason with her, make her understand how you feel about Brian. She's his mother, she wants him to be happy. Good luck. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, I don't think there is an article of clothing Kiki owns that she is not taking with her. Taking where? To my parents. We'll drop her off. I'm going with you to the country house. You decided to come with me? Mm-hmm. You sure? Yes. I'm not going to let the darling drama rob me of a chance to breathe some clean air with my husband. Good. four times a year. Buongiorno, cari. Oh, leave those. Albert will get them. I told you she'd come. It'll be fine. I told you she'd come. It'll be fine. Hi, dear. Mm. Hi, Lisa. Hi. I love it. to have you here. Wow, would you look at that? Oh, here we go. You must be summoned. It is a pleasure to meet you. Patrick! Oh, hi, Mother. Great. Simon. Yeah. How are you? This is my wife, Lisa. Hi. And this is Karen Darling. Karen? Hi. The Karen. Yes, Karen. I'm sure everybody could use a little drinky food. Hey, you're just in time. So what are we hunting? Quail. Hike in a pheasant or two. This late in the season? Sure. You're not planning on shooting him, are you? Come on, Vic. You know me better than that. The country makes everyone so ravenous. Tutto bene. Everything's just terrific, Mother. Thank you. Not liking that quail? I'm all for sport hunting and responsible wildlife management, but actually, I don't eat meat. Oh, but that's all the yummy stuff. Do you eat anything yummy? Down, girl. Shut up. Well, we can have them cook you something else. It's trout. No, no, no. The salad is enough. Everything's wonderful. Thank you. Lisa. You must come with me after dinner to the East Wing. I mean to show you something. A little art collection. Okay. Sounds great. Take us some time. Niente. It's an hour and a half wait. Should we just go? No. Let me see what I can do. Jeremy, it's okay. Hold on, I can be charming. Excuse me. Can you please double check about a table for two? Actually, looks like I might have a table, Mr. Darling. One more thing. Should this be a few? Three. <laughs> Davidson, party of two? She has a table. I told the team you lied. Happy birthday to you. Embarrassing. My birthday's in March. It was the only way I can get a table. Just you no know, pretend. <laughs> I'm having a great time tonight. Me too. You know, it's uh, kind of nice going out on a normal date. And how does this normal date end? How about a walk on the promenade? How about we go back to your place? What that? 
That is, that is a much better idea. There, except I can't. I, I got a friend crashing my place for Thanksgiving tomorrow. You know, he, he is, uh, he's a little down on his luck, kind of poor. Too bad. There is another option. Isn't there some way that we can work something out just between us? Brian, it's too late for that. When that arbitrator delivers her recommendation to the judge, it's all over. And I'll abide by that. Of course you will, because it's all going to go your way, not his, not mine, yours. Brian, that first day that I met you at church, you sat and talked with me for hours about faith and solace. Yes, yeah, so what about it? So you are the one who taught me to bring my problems in life to God. Have you thought about doing that? I know this whole get-together may seem a little old-fashioned, but I thought it was time to cut through the haze of go-betweens and talk in person. Hey, I couldn't agree more. Patty, I'm glad you came. Thank you. As long as everything's moving forward, Dad, I'm happy. No hard feelings. So, what are you doing with my son? Doing? What? <laughs> now, what is the nature of your alliance? Uh, hold on a second. Are you kidding? This is none of your business anymore, Dad. You don't have to answer that. No, no, no. I'm happy to. I'm ecstatic. I, I've simply offered myself to Patrick as an advisor and, uh, and a friend during this time of transition. So you're not using him as a pawn to enact revenge against me, huh? Um, I think that Patrick's pedigree, combined with his passion for social justice, is going to make him a very effective senator. I'm excited to be on his team, that's all. Dad, try not to make a fool of yourself, okay? What's this all about, Trip? It's about the chilling heartlessness of a man determined to tear asunder the long-standing family ties in the course of his vendetta. Do you want to tell him why you want to destroy my family, or shall I? Yo, Lisa, I, um... I've been meaning to apologize to you, but I, um, I keep putting it off. You know, for the wedding, for Karen's you know, behavior. She can be so rash and faultless sometimes, and I, I know how proud she is, and she'd never come to you herself. What are you talking about? You present yourself as a some sort of modern-day saint. But that's not who you are at all. You're not motivated by benevolence. You're driven from your very core by an obsessive malevolence against me and my family. I, I've got to get going. Patty, hear this out. Trip. None of this is personal. It's business. So, your family's history with my family has nothing to do with it. What are you, what are you talking about, Trip? I didn't know what his real name was before. But as soon as I found out, everything fell into place. His parents used to work for our family for a long time. Do you want to continue, or shall I? What happened? Oh, it was nothing, really. I'm sorry, I, uh... Well, I, I assumed you knew. Um, you and Karen have been so chilly that you... Been... What happened? I would love to hear what you think you know. Your father was my mother's lover. Now, that was the rumor, and my father couldn't live with those rumors, true or false. So he dismissed his parents, and they fled to the Soviet Union with the belief that communism spoke more clearly to the plight of African Americans. But it wasn't so rosy over there, was it? His family ended up in a Siberian work camp, and they died there leaving you an orphan. Is that true? It touches on the truth. Well, you know, Karen was in a bit of a depression, you know, post-divorce and a little intoxicated. And she... Well, she apparently kissed Nick and declared her undying love for him. She can be so impulsive. No, it is the truth. And it's the truth that you hold me personally responsible for the death of your parents. See, I don't need 
some desiccated old man to tell me my history. Desiccated? Especially one who gets it all wrong. My parents didn't go to Russia by choice. Your family forced them there. Oh, no, you've got it all wrong. I'm not dried meat. And your parents were not deported from this country, and you know it. No, no. But once their names have been handed over to the State Department, they were, for all intents and purposes, hounded out of this country, so yeah. Their deaths lie at the feet of your family. Completely. All right, I've heard enough. I don't know who's telling the truth here, okay? But the fact that you lured all of us up here for this little performance of yours, and then get everyone else involved with your game, that arrogance is precisely why I stopped trusting you years ago, and why I will never trust you again. Do you understand? Did you see Ellen? Tell her I've gone out. I head home as well. I wish this had ended differently. Well, it ended exactly as I expected it to end, with a crafty denial. Night, Rick. Good night. Well, at least it's out there for everyone to know. Excuse me. So sick. Simon. Simon. You told me this wasn't an ambush. I didn't know anything you about it. You need to stop lying to me. I will not be played. No one is playing you. If that fossil wants a war, that's exactly what we'll get. That's what you'll both get. Simon. 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 This was all a trip. I had nothing to do with it. That's the truth. The, tr oh, the truth. The, the truth is pretty malleable around here. All right, all right, all right. Just... Listen, if we're going to go any further, I need to know one last time whether you're with me or not. Well, if all you're doing is exacting revenge, then no, Nick, no. I'm not exacting revenge. But Trip Darling only half the city is not good for the people of New York. He is a dangerous man. Look, I know that Trip has made some shady business deals, but dangerous? Yes. Do you remember Kenneth Darling, Trip's brother? Son, come on. The only people who think that Trip had anything to do with Kenneth Darling's assassination are crackpot conspiracy theorists on the internet and two people who were actually suspects in the killing. Both of whom have since been completely discredited. Yeah, you, you, you're probably right, because bad things don't really happen. It's all just a story. Right? Where's Nick? I'm not sure. Scotch? Uh-oh, it's empty. Sorry. Were you this drunk when you kissed my husband and told him that you loved him at your wedding? Actually, no. I was sober. So was he. Hey, there you are. Be careful. She just found out about her kiss at the wedding. It was not our kiss, Karen. Unbelievable. You are unbelievable. <sighs> Why do you do that? I didn't tell her, Nick. I thought it was going to be our little secret. How did you think to come up to this place? Oh, my dad works for them. Uh, he told me they're all out of town, so... So, what does Mr. Babison do? Oh? Your dad's silly Mr. Babison. Right, um... He is a limo driver for this family of the Darlings. Mm. You never heard of them? No. Should I have? No, no, you, no, you absolutely you shouldn't have. You know what's so amazing about you? What? Being with you. I, I feel like it doesn't matter how much money I have. Or don't have. It's like it's just you and me, you know? Dear God. I don't ask you for much. Because I know I don't deserve much. But please help the arbitrator to understand that I love my son. I'm so sorry. And please give her the good sense. I think this is yours? No, it fell out of From your... Reverend Darling? To accept my generous donation.
So you're just gonna leave right now? I'm going to my parents' house. I need some time to regroup. Lisa, the only reason that I didn't tell you was that I didn't want to waste our time arguing over nothing. It was basically a, a peck in the cheek. Her lips, my cheek. How many times does she have to kiss you before you put a stop to it? I can't control what Karen does. Is that going to be your excuse when you two sleep She's together? She's delusional, Lisa. I've told her over and over there will never be anything between us, but she lives in this world where she thinks she can have anything she wants. Yeah, well, there is a pattern here, Nick, and for the first time, I feel like you are taking part in it, whether you believe it or not. You know what? I've been pissed off at Karen, but I have never worried about you. Now I am. Hey, baby. What are you working on? You went to see her, didn't you? Where is she? In a motel. A few miles from here. Could you at least take a shower? Well, we didn't do anything. It just, I... Look, it's been a rough night, and I, I needed to talk to someone. I, I can... I can tell her things. Well, I... Ellen... Simon left so abruptly. How was the meeting? Ultimately... Wearying. Sometimes I think I'm almost ready to leave, you know? This life. I'm glad I married you. I'm glad I married you. What the hell was that? attempt on Patrick Darling? No, this was a simple run-of-the-mill hunting accident. Where are the wounds? Mr. Darling sustained injuries, minor injuries, to his leg, and he is expected to make a full and speedy recovery. Who shot him? Nobody shot him, per se. This was an accident. Fine. Who pulled the trigger? Charlie Mickelson, a longtime Darling family friend. He is devastated by the incident, and we obviously request that he respect his privacy. Where is Ellen, Darling? Why hasn't she been here to see him? Ellen is resting at the Imperial, and she's also quite devastated. And we all hope that we can just put this unfortunate episode behind us and enjoy the holiday as best we can. Why was the Attorney General hunting at night? No further questions. Jeremy? Clark. Looking forward to the... Turkey festivities this evening? I am, I am. I uh, don't know how festive it's going to be with Patrick's leg in a sling, but I finally have something to be thankful for. Let's go, Clark. Jeremy! Sophia, I didn't, I didn't know you were going to be here today. You know, the Thanksgiving and you know. all. Want to sell this? Uh, this? This is... Oh, of course, that's your father. How sweet of him to pick you up from your work. Yeah, he is. He is the sweetest. He, you are... A, you, thank you, thank you, Pops. What the hell's going on here? You call Clark, just know you're my father and our last name is Babison. Got it. Sophia! This is my dad. Which oath them? Oh, Babesons don't shake. Babesons hug. Hey, <laughs> how are you? I'm good. <laughs> mm. yeah. Thank you for doing this, Charlie. Happy to help out, Trent. What did I shoot him with again? Double-barreled shotgun. Pretty. 20-gauge, bird shot. Both barrels. Right. Mm. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Tell Helen we'd love to see you sometime. Will do. Thank you. How's Patrick doing? Doped up on sedatives. Helen? Also doped up on sedatives. You know, this could be... It's not going to get out, is it? I'm just thinking of Patrick's campaign. Shouldn't be a problem. He's my son. You okay? I said I'd never lie for the family, and all of a sudden I'm making up stories for the press about hunting accidents. Doesn't seem like a step in the right direction. Hey. You told Dutch you were too busy to see him, and you weren't. Come on. Come on, Nick. Life's messy. Why didn't you tell me that Elder's parents worked for the family? The whole point of this is for him to trust me. I didn't want to put you in a position where you would have to lie. 
and I could not take a chance that his faith in you would be in any way diminished. So all that was true about Elder's parents? Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, he got it wrong about my parents reporting his parents to the authorities. That wasn't them. It was my father. Yeah. That was Dutch. My dad, maybe he was fit to be tied if he'd had his way. It, I mean, you know, the 50s were different times. Dutch got into it, had them safely put on a boat to Russia. You know, if you're looking for a motive for who killed your dad, I mean, if Simon Elder knew that it was Dutch who did that, what? Isn't that Darling Plaza? Yeah, God. It's the third time I've seen it today. It doesn't get any easier. Darling Plaza was demolished today as part of billionaire Simon Elder's redevelopment plan for a new, greener Manhattan. According to the demolition team, the 15-story building came There down is nothing that that man is not capable of doing. I was hoping it'd be you. Hi. Happy Thanksgiving. Such as it is. I'm sorry I left, Nick, but sometimes it is really hard to deal with this whole situation. Well, I'll quit. Why don't I, why don't I quit? But I feel like you're slipping away, like things are just spiraling out of control for, for both of us. Why don't I drive up there right now? No. We're just about to sit down and eat. Just take the night, relax. We'll still be here tomorrow. All right. Well, I'll drive up in the morning. I love you, Nick. And I'm... I'm really... I'm trying. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. I'm trying to, Lise. We'll get through this. <laughs>